Let me begin by quoting who I believe to be an incredible theologian of the 20th century, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis says the following, and I think it's really worth taking the time to be able to break this down a little bit and fully understand it. So what does C.S. Lewis say? In God, you come up against something which is in every respect immeasurably superior to yourself. And unless you know God as that, and therefore know yourself as nothing in comparison, you do not know God at all. So what does C.S. Lewis basically saying here. It's so important for us to understand that the relationship between knowing God and knowing myself is incredibly interrelated. There is something there to be said about how it is that in knowing who I am, I will also discover who God is. And in knowing who God is, this will also give me a standard, a benchmark, if you wish, into understanding who I am. So when we begin to break this down, when we begin to come closer to God and you just realize how great and eternal and as C.S. Lewis says, immeasurably superior God is to myself, I then very quickly realize that the worship of myself, this identity that I've created within me, this idea that everything revolves around me, begins to slowly break down. And when you come to this realization, it gives you insight as to who it is you truly are. Now, you might quickly hear this and think to yourself, okay, so here we go. This is going to turn into self-hating Christianity and I, I hate myself and I am worthless and I am lowly and I am nothing. And no, that's not the case. But the case is for you to understand that this immeasurably superior God created you with intention, created you out of love, created you so that you can bear his image. Because in recognizing who this immeasurably superior God is, it will give you insight into his heart and his intention for you. So. What does this mean? In order for us to be able to understand this, I would love for us to be able to reference a person like St. Anthony the Great. St. Anthony says in the 4th century that we are invited to know. And this invitation to know is one that will force us to be able to pose the question, do I truly know who I am? And if I have discovered who I am, what my intention, or what God's intention was when he created me, his purpose behind creating me out of love and out of mercy, and out of truly his goodness only, what does this say about me? And once I realize who I am, this will naturally tell me who God is in the process. So what does St. Anthony say in his third letter? He says, he who knows himself knows God. And he who knows God knows also the dispensations which he makes for his creatures. I, this is so important for us to be able to really unpack and wrap our minds around. If I know who I am, this gives me insight into the very image of the one who I was created after his image. If and I know myself, I can then point back to God and understand who it is that he has created me to be. So St. Anthony is inviting us to this, to be able to understand who we are in order for us to then be able to understand who God is. I want to be able to point this back to a very specific passage that the Lord himself says in the Gospels. I'm going to quote here the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 22. And if you remember the context of this passage, basically what's happening is that there's a group of people who want to be able to trap the Lord. And they're tired of the fact that he has uh, so much popularity and, and the, the great population of people around him really do believe that he is the Messiah, that he is some sort of very uh, righteous prophet who the Lord uh, has sent, and they really believe that this man is sent from God. Now, whether or not people fully understood that he was God in the flesh is not fully revealed at this point, but you can tell that people are really beginning to believe that he is the one that Daniel prophesied about. He is the Son of Man. And so here, the, the people who stand against the Lord want to trap him. So what do they want to do? They want to set him up against either the great population of the people around him, or they want to set him up to be an enemy of the state. And the best way to do this is to pose a question and to say, tell us, should we pay taxes to Caesar? Now, why is this a loaded question? Because what they're trying to do is to make sure that no matter how the Lord Jesus Christ answers this question, he fails. If he says, no, don't pay taxes to Caesar, then they have evidence that he is potentially trying to cause a rebellion, and he's inviting the people to go against the laws of the empire, in which state the, 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 the entire empire would be against us. And so, in doing this, the Roman soldiers would then have every reason to be able to take him into custody and to put him on trial. And if he says, yes, pay the taxes, well, then you have the issue with 
the vast majority of the people around him who are suffering at the hands of paying overly high, overly um, overly demanding taxes. And, and they're tired of living under the empire which they believe persecute them. And they want to go back to the glory days of, you know, the people of Israel, those who were under David, the prophet and the king, the great nation of Israel. They want to be independent. They don't want to be under Rome. And so one answer would potentially upset the state and the other answer is going to upset the people. The Lord in his wisdom, he answers this beautifully, of course. You know, him who is wisdom, him who is the Logos of God answers this beautifully. But what does he say? He says, show me the tax money. And so they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? And so they brought him a denarius. And you have here on the screen an example of what a denarius would look like. And on every piece of mint, on all of the monetary, uh, uh, all, of the, all of the money that was exchanged at the time, you always had the image of the emperor. And so they answered him and they said, Caesar's. So his answer to them is, then render unto Caesar. What is Caesar's? And give to God what is God's. But what is implied here? He is suggesting that what belongs to Caesar has his image engraved on it. And so because Caesar's image is engraved on the denarius, then give the denarius back to the one whose image it bears. But then he says, give unto God what is God's. Now let me ask you the question. Who is it that bears God's image? Is it not the human being? He's saying, in other words, give the money back to Caesar. What God wants is you, the person, the human being, the heart on which I engraved my very own image. And this is so important for us to understand. The Lord is saying, in other words, you are mine because you bear my image. 